Hi friend, today I'm going to talk about what we should be putting in our bodies to be healthy and why food is at the heart of good health, whereas most supplements aren't. Now this topic is really critical for you to be healthy and there are some exceptions to this broad rule. There are some supplements that I take and I would strongly suggest that you look into taking as well and see if it's right for you and if you need them. So I would please ask for you to watch this video through to the end so that you don't come away with partial information that could be damaging to your health. I want you to have the best information based on solid evidence because your health is so precious. I mean, it's literally priceless. So I am aiming to give you that great information in this video. So let's dive right in. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Dr. Ryan Williams, the founder of Growing Pure, where I help you make vegan cooking and health fast, simple, and mind-blowingly tasty. So let's get into this with something that should be pretty obvious to you. Getting the right nutrients for health is vitally important. In this case, we're talking about micronutrients as opposed to macronutrients. So micronutrients are things that we only need sort of milligrams or even micrograms of on a daily basis. So it's very small quantities, but they are critically important to allow our bodies to function normally. And indeed, we may be able to survive without, without great levels of some of these micronutrients, but to be optimal and to really thrive, we want to cover our bases here. But unfortunately, getting these micronutrients is not always so easy. According to the National Health Service in the UK, malnutrition affects millions of people. And the US CDC estimates that up to 10% of the US population could be deficient in certain micronutrients. Worldwide, iron deficiency is thought to affect up to 25% of people. That's like a quarter of all people. And it's also thought that vitamin D deficiency can be pretty common, especially in older people. Okay, so given that this is a problem, we have supplements for virtually all of these micronutrients, these vitamins and minerals now. So why don't we just pop pills, cover our bases and forget about food? Like, let's just eat the pills, right? Unfortunately, it just isn't quite as simple as that. Micronutrient supplements are rarely as effective in promoting good health as foods that contain those micronutrients. In fact, supplements can sometimes not only be ineffective, they can also be dangerous. And so we tend to see that these nutrient supplements that we can buy from a, a pharmacist or a health store, for one thing, they're not always regulated very tightly in the same way that drugs would be. So you're not even sure that you're necessarily getting what it says it is on the bottle. That's a different issue. Let's assume that you are getting what it says it is. That supplement may still not be providing the health benefits that you would expect from a food containing that nutrient. In fact, the effects can be really quite different. And I want to draw your attention to a case study here of beta carotene. Now, beta carotene is a carotenoid vitamin A precursor. And I actually did a video recently all about carotenoids and how they are amazing they are for making your skin glow when you have them in their food format. And you can go watch that video if you want. There's a link up here and there'll be one in the description below. But beta carotene is a naturally occurring antioxidant. It's a very powerful antioxidant. And so it was thought that that antioxidant capacity may help to protect against cancer growth. And it was observed that people eating beta carotene rich foods experienced decreased rates of lung cancer. And so it was hypothesized that beta carotene could be useful in preventing or treating lung cancer and potentially other types of cancer too. And so researchers in Finland decided to put this to the test. And so they gave smokers a beta carotene supplement for six and a half years. And the results were striking. It turns out that taking beta carotene supplements increased the rate of lung cancer deaths by 46% and increased the rate of cardiovascular deaths by 26% in this study. And indeed, this effect was deemed so 
clear and so strong and so dangerous that the study was terminated early. They stopped it because they said clearly this beta carotene supplementation is too dangerous to carry on with. But here is the real kicker. In that same study, the researchers found that people eating beta carotene in food form actually experienced decreased rates of lung cancer. That's astonishing. Beta carotene from food led to less lung cancer. Beta carotene from a supplement led to more. And this finding was confirmed in other big studies as well. And there's now a consensus that beta carotene supplementation does not help with cancer or cardiovascular disease prevention. Now, usually vitamin or nutrient supplements don't have a dramatic dangerous effect like this. That's quite rare. So this is quite an extreme case study. However, it is pretty common that supplements do not give the same health benefits as foods containing those nutrients. And so one of the great beauties of a whole food vegan diet filled with whole grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds, this kind of diet is already absolutely packed with nutrients, with micronutrients and macronutrients for that matter. Plant foods in general are so nutrient rich that it's generally quite easy to hit all of your nutrient requirements when you're eating this way. So I think you'll generally find a sort of whole food plant-based diet will help you to achieve great health and hit all of your nutrient requirements. But if you want to look into this and find out for yourself, you could use a website like Chronometer. This is a sort of food tracking app and you can input your food that you eat for a day or a few days and it'll tell you whether you're hitting the nutrient requirements for all your different vitamins and minerals and protein and all that kind of stuff. So if you're curious, that's definitely what I would suggest you do. Go and have a look at what you eat in a typical few days and see if you hit your nutrient requirements on something like Chronometer. Although I would point out that there are tens of thousands of nutrients that may not be, you may not die without them, but they are still really important for good health and they will not be on chronometer. So you're getting a lot more in whole plant foods than we necessarily understand in exquisite detail now. But this brings me on to something really important. Whilst I have said that food is the best way to get your nutrients, there are a handful of nutrients where it is very difficult to get enough through food alone. And in these cases, I would not hesitate to take a supplement. It's, we know that we need these nutrients and a supplement is definitely better than not having it at all. And so there are two nutrients in particular that I would really suggest you pay attention to. The first one is vitamin B12. This is an essential nutrient and it's really not worth the risk of not getting enough. Vitamin B12 is essential for a healthy brain and nervous system. So if you end up in a vitamin B12 deficient state, you could be experiencing things like numbness, psychological problems like depression and anxiety, pins and needles, incontinence, and muscle weakness. And although many of these symptoms will improve with treatment, Sometimes the damage can be irreversible. And the longer you're in a vitamin B12 deficient state, the more likely it is that these symptoms might be irreversible. So please do not take the chance with your health. Now, in a vegan diet, there are no natural reliable sources of vitamin B12. That's because it's made by bacteria. So, we don't eat many bacteria because we wash our foods and we sanitize our water, so we don't tend to eat a lot that way. You can get it through animal products. That tends to be because animals are supplemented with vitamin B12 themselves through their feed, and that way the vitamin works its way into their flesh and their secretions like their milk or their eggs. So I think you are really best to take a vitamin B12 supplement, honestly, whatever your diet, especially if you're over 50 years old because it is more common to be deficient in older people than younger for B12. I will point out that there are some fortified plant foods, things like plant-based milks, uh, nutritional yeast, where you can get vitamin B12, but 
I would hesitate to suggest that these are a reliable source unless, unless you know that you're eating a lot of them each day. A supplement is probably gonna be the safer option. The other vitamin is vitamin D. This is the sunshine vitamin. So vitamin D helps to regulate the amount of calcium and phosphate in our body, and it's essential for keeping our bones and teeth healthy. And so vitamin D deficiency can lead to problems with your bones, things like rickets in children and bone pain conditions in adults. Now in the UK, the government advice coming from Public Health England is that everyone should consider taking a vitamin D supplement, particularly through the winter months, because you're not gonna be getting as much sunlight on your skin. So let's just think a little bit about this. In theory, you should be able to get enough vitamin D from sunlight, UV light from sunlight hitting your skin. However, that UV light is not going to hit your skin if you have clothing on, which stops the sunlight, you have sunscreen on, which stops the sunlight, or you're inside through glass. Glass lets some sunlight through, but it doesn't let UV through. So getting sunlight on your skin through glass is not a way to get vitamin D. And so actually I was curious about this and I decided to go to a doctor. Uh, when I was doing my PhD in chemistry, I was in the lab all day. I didn't really spend a lot of time outside. So I went and got my blood tested and sure enough, I was deficient in vitamin D. This was probably five years ago, something like that. From then on, I've been taking a vitamin D supplement on pretty much a daily basis. I don't just do it in winter because I often still work inside even in summer so I'm not necessarily getting plenty of sunlight on my skin and I live in the UK which is not known as being a particularly sunny country and happily that supplement allowed me to get to a healthy level of vitamin D and I've maintained that ever since. So I would tend to suggest that if you're not getting a lot of sunlight on your skin or you work inside a lot then you will probably want to take a vitamin D supplement. Ideally, you go with vegan vitamin D3 because most of the studies have been on vitamin D3, but you could also go for D2. That is another option. And in particular, I would suggest this in the winter months. So aside from these two nutrients, vitamin B12 and vitamin D, you should be able to get everything else you need through your diet if you have a, a balanced vegan whole food diet but I would strongly suggest you check with your doctor or physician for your personal circumstances and make sure that you are getting all the nutrients you need and you can use chronomesa or something like that for that. And I actually might suggest that I believe in an approach to health of being proactive rather than reactive. I'd rather catch a problem early on than catch it later when I've got symptoms. So it might not be such a bad idea to get your blood levels of some of these nutrients tested on a, you know, once in a while, perhaps annually, and just see whether everything is looking right. Especially if you're feeling symptoms, like you're tired or you're lethargic, you're falling asleep, maybe something like that. That should give you peace of mind and just help you catch any problems really early on so you can solve them. All right, so I've been through quite a lot here. What is the take home message? I would say it is that we want to have as much nutrition from food as possible because that's what we evolved for, right? We didn't evolve to take supplements, we evolved to eat food and get our nutrition that way. And that the science shows that that is the way that we thrive best. However, we don't live in nature anymore and we should be proactive in looking after our health. So we shouldn't be afraid to take certain supplements uh, if we think we need them. Now I want to offer you a free gift to say thank you for being here with me today and sharing your precious time with me. I wanna give you my guide on how to make vegan meals that are healthy and delicious super fast. Okay, you're gonna get my top five time-saving hacks that will give you hours of time back in your kitchen and in your food prep. Your time is really precious, so I want you to have this. So you can get that just by clicking the link in the description below. I'd like to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.